Hello, today we're doing something slightly different. We're talking about the wonderful world oh, of tanks. Of tanks. Yeah, tanks that blow stuff up sky high. Looking mainly at the, uh, at the Warhammer 40,000s, um, range of tanks, different tanks, what, what good tanks, what bad tanks, what are tanks supposed to do, and what, what really is the history of tanks. Yes. Um, tanks were first thought about, just an idea for something to, to, to be armoured and carried people around back in the f First World War. H.G. Wells was one of the first people to write about them in his book called The, the Battle of the Ironclads. And they first saw action in um, 1916, in the Battle of the Somme, in the Great War. One of the problems they had in that war... Have you got it? One of the problems they had in that war, it was a trench warfare, and, oh, yeah. and what was happening is people were dying trying to cross the no-man's land between the two trenches. Going so down by machine guns and MG nests. And pretty much... This is kind of built as one of them. That and Lehman Ross are very close in design, design to the original tanks used by the by the British Army. Uh, if it didn't have these, it would look yeah. exactly the Sponson, same. Sponsor Sponson weapons. It was it basically was was an armored an armored vehicle to allow allow troops to cross across through no man's land and not be shot to pieces by um, men by Mission by guns. rifles basically. Yeah, right. Uh, although they could be damaged by artillery, but the artillery wasn't that, that effective. Good in the World, First World War. Mm. In the Second World War, they'd evolved. They were much faster beasts. In some ways, could move quite quite quickly. Quickly, they'd have things like a turret mounting, like you get on there, which was only invented between the wars, and uh, that meant you could could move and position your gun however you wanted a lot lot quicker than actually. Um, Turning, turning the tank. If you've got like a, a land raider, that's one of the problems. Are all its weapons are forward facing, and that, in actual fact, if you get behind it, there's not a lot it can do. And uh, in the Second World War, what they, the way they found to, to make to defend tanks was using like a combination of infantry and tanks, yeah. so that the infantry can support the tanks against the. Which the Germans first used in the Second World War. Yeah, because. Because you, you use in the German army in the, in the Second World War, they were equipped with Panzerfaust, were they? Yeah, Panzerfaust. which which, which could mm, semi easily take out a tank, particularly yeah. the uh, lightly armed arm and Sherman, like the American and British used. Um, so a combination of infantry and armor was used, and, and that's really the key to Warhammer Forty Thousand, isn't it? Combination of, yeah. of don't get don't get too obsessed by your armor. Make sure you've got some men to support because men men are much more flexible. They can do a lot more. They can also carry anti tank weapons, which is kind of useful. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about the individual ones. Um, First off, we'll go for the Land Raider. Let's go for the Land Raider. Space Marines. Which? Space Marine Land Raider. Land Raider. It's um, it's an it's, the Land Raider is interesting. I've got a, the Crusader. Which I think is an interesting combination of um, anti-personnel and anti-tank. Anti -tank. Its main limitations in, for the Crusader is the fact that it's, all its weapons only have a 24-inch range. Uh, but its strength, and this, this make, is what makes this, this uh, tank different from all of the tanks in Warhammer 40,000, is the fact that it's got a rear armour of 14. So it's, it's a faint, I like to think of it as, as like an, an armoured fist... That just smashes into into troops, and, and uh, it just stops the advance. And it, and it, you actually actually to use it effectively, you probe it forward from your lines and into the enemy lines, and try and smash it. They can't really smash into it, do much to smash it because it doesn't have any vulnerable side. Yeah. <laughs> you played against it, haven't you? But at the same time. You know, it's got it, and it's got a nice mix of with a with a multi melter. Multi melter is very good against um, other tanks if you can get close enough. Such as the hammerhead, which has the railgun, which is deadly. But it's quite it's it's 
it's it's slow, it's tracked, so it can't <coughs> can't unlike um, the falcons and the hammerheads just float over over, choose choose what target, yeah, fly away and and basically pass over over difficult terrain with no problem. So it it doesn't certainly um, a skimmer it limitates it. A skimmer can yeah. could can keep away from it if if the terrain set up in that way. Um, it's got a nice. I find find these weapons are very good for, for keeping away troops, which is good. Uh, there are other other one. It's the main tank is the Predator. Now this is more like all the other Warhammer forty thousand tanks in the fact that it's got. Uh, it tends to have long range weapons like the last cannons, which I've equipped on here. Pretty much is it's just a lumen rust for space marines. Yeah, not. Heavily armoured, it's reasonably armoured, but again, it's got this, I think an armour of ten at the rear, yeah. so it's very, very, very. If you get behind it, you can you can really cause it some pain. Yeah. And Cameron, as, as the towers, um, deep you've deep strike um, drones. drones behind it, yeah. and basically it, even a drone. If you shoot, throw enough drones at, at behind it, drones have got a strength oh. strength five weapon, is it? They have. Yeah. yeah, strength, strength five, weapon, five, but shitty ballistic. So on a on a damage of five, it it gets a glancing. On a damage of six, it gets penetrating. Mm. So you 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 know a lot of with a lot of tanks, this is it. You know the way to do, to beat them is to get behind them and, and shoot at them. Um, but you know if it's got a long range, it means you're not going to move it forward. So it makes it more tricky for your opponent and to get behind it. And in the space moons versus tower battle. Yeah, the one we we just did yesterday. Yeah. On to the Imperial Army, who of course don't just have have good armor, but they also have probably the best the, the best artillery, the better weapons. Pieces. They they really can they they have Pack a punch have nasty powerful quite powerful weapons, but also they can shoot from long distances. Mm. Uh, Lima Ross is you know from the front is I think. 14, 13. Yeah, 14 and 13. It's either, it's either 12 or 11 on the back. I'm not too sure. I'll I think just it's check. like 11. Um, so from the front, it's, it's it's almost equal to Land Raider. But from behind, again, it's vulnerable. But then again, it's it's so... T it's got... Its weapons have got such a long range that you don't need to move them forward. Karen play... We play... We're going to go front armour 12, side armour 12... Uh, front armour 14, sorry, side armour 12. Rear ten. Yeah, so that is the rear rear hatch that really is the weakness on this. Yeah. And we did a, a big tank battle. Um, and all hot gaming club on Boxing Day, and Cameron pretty much didn't move his tanks at all. I just shot because shot. you don't need to. You just you just as long as you got visibility, and even even with uh, things like the the Lima Ross and the, and the Basilisk, yeah, you can you can. You can just sit back and just. They're ordnance weapons. Shoot. You can fire them from long range, and you don't really have to worry about this kind of thing. Um, what does what strength is the battle? Uh, the battle cannon on the uh, Lumen Ross. I think it's about strength eight, is it? But it's also got a blast area, which means it's equally equally good against tanks. Or yeah, battle cannon strength eight AP. Three one blast seventy two inch range. Yeah, there is there is a version of the Lehman Russell which has got a strength ten, is it? Uh, yeah, the demolisher. Yeah. Cannon. But it sacrifices range, so it's only got a range of twenty four. Yes, you're which means right. You've got to get <laughs> got. I see. I memorised these stats. You've got to get so much closer, and that puts you in danger. Out of interest, what's the basilisk? Uh, basilisk is a hundred of oh, the Earth Shaker. It's one hundred and twenty range. Strength nine, AP three, ordinance one That's blast. Pretty tough. That's pretty tough. Pretty much, the basilisk is for taking only infantry out, mainly because it's got such a strength of a weapon to uh to pretty much kill infantry. Uh, pretty much the this is for taking out tanks. Probably medium, like armor four, thirteen on the front, yeah. and light like uh, the the all. It has trucks. to be. It has to be tough because, of course. What you're going to do is you're going to form a basic artillery, artillery line at the back at end of your army. You can just keep shooting the whole keep game. Keep the whole game. Them. Now, moving on from the Imperial Army to what I think are some of the most exciting tanks. In, uh, oh. Ah, oh. oh, 
the, the tent. I absolutely adore the models for the towel. I don't collect towel. Cameron does. Ooh, yes. I think they're absolutely fantastically interesting, aren't they? If you can use, use them the right way, which is shooting from distance. Um, I'm just getting the colours. Hammerhead, I think, is, is to me almost one of the perfect tanks going. It's got marker lights to allow you to, to, to get a more accurate shot because usually the ballistic skill of the uh, tower isn't that great. So you've got a 50-50 chance of, of missing or hitting. The, um, the railgun is, is probably one of the most awesome weapons that there is on the table, really. Mm. Uh, just, just for the fact that you can shoot... What's the range of it? 48? Uh, 72. 72. There's very few tables you can, you can not... But then you could... Uh, you're just not never going to be out of range of <laughs> you know, it. Unless you're on Apocalypse board and you just sat at the back of the board and just went boof, boof, boof. Yep, destroyed, destroyed, destroyed. Um, but against that, it's it's you can equip it with these two um, blast cannons. No. Are they? Burst cannons. Burst cannons. Which is basically just machine guns on drones. Yeah, just like they, they give you six, six shots at strength five. So that means within a range of 18 inches. That means that it's very hard to approach, get up up close to a um, to a hammerhead with your infantry. You're most if you're if you're a team of five Space Marines, you're quite likely to lose a lot of those guys. You've got a good chance of losing. Plus, uh, most uh, most Tau players do try and defend their hammerheads with pretty much anybody's lives. They will sacrifice the fire warriors, or I would. Uh, the crutes, battle suits, anything that the Tau have, I would sacrifice for that little tank that does so much. Yeah. Quite, I quite like path, Pathfinders as well. Oh, plus... Not um, Pathfinders, I keep Devilfish. Devilfish. Devilfish as well. I, I like quite like... What I like about most of the Tau is the flexibility of just putting... Um, gun drones. Gun drones on it. I think, as, as I was been saying to Cameron, though, one thing I do wish that they do is perhaps come up with, uh, like, a heavy weapons... Yeah, just like a missile make... gun, gun drone. Just... Yeah. In, ge in general, I think the infantry of the uh, Tau kind of feel like they're missing the heavy weapons. Oh, that's a pulse carbine guy for yeah. you. But they, they don't have the heavy weapons. So whereas with with, a, rifle. with Space Marines, you can, you can equip a unit with like a, a missile launcher, which gives you a reasonable chance to go around but that's hunting probably... tanks. Yeah, but that's probably why you've got the uh, ballasts with the fusion blasters, which are pretty much tank hunters, mm. tank killers. But yeah, but it, it makes the Space Marines more versatile at, at, at attacking most things mm. if you equip them correctly. Um, oh, plus um, you can for the hammer hand, you could also um, put a uh, iron cannon on it, which is uh, it's got a range of sixty, strength seven, AP three, but you get three shots. Mm. Is it rending? No, it's not rending. No, it's not rending. Right? But it's rending, a heavy rending is useful because the, the ability to keep do repeating shots. Finally, I'm going to try and wrap this up. Comes the Elder Falcon. Um, not particularly tough. Uh, front armor of twelve. Probably the best thing is if the uh, codex I've I've sit looked in last. Used to, I think you used to be able to equip these with bright lances, mm. and lances were kind of quite good because they had strength eight, but for something like this, it's armor fourteen. It treats it as it treats armor, armor fourteen as armor twelve. Armor thirteen as armor twelve. So it means that you you've suddenly, you know, suddenly you bring a land cruiser against uh, te against uh, Eldar carrying bright lances, and suddenly you've wasted you know your money. Two hundred points. You might as well have just gone for one of these because their their lances can just. I've got so much more chance of okay. penetrating. Yeah. I mean. If you get a hit with a lance, bright lance, there's a 50-50 chance of causing damage. and Because uh, you've got one chance in six of getting a glancing and two chances in six yes. of getting a um, penetrating. penetrating shot. That's not good. Anyway, that's our little talk about tanks. How they came and how they killed. Well, pretty much. Have fun out there. Ooh. Bye. Bye.